Time now for everybody's favorite guessing game, What's My Line? Brought to you by Dr. Jules Montagnier, the famous cosmetic chemist, creator of that popular trio, Stop F Spray Deodorant. Poof, there goes perspiration. Its delightful spray mate, Poof, deodorant body powder. And Finesse, the new flowing cream shampoo. And now Dr. Jules Montagnier, originator of these three fine products, invites you to enjoy What's My Line? Now, let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in the New York Journal American and papers coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. And on my left, a young man whose new record called Bebox Fables is a big disc jockey hit from coast to coast, Mr. Steve Allen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And on my left, one of the lovely ladies of radio and television who is opening Thursday in Hartford, Connecticut with a new play, Late Love, Arlene Francis. Thank you, Stephen. On my left, a gentleman whose newest and funniest book, Good for a Laugh, has passed the 100,000th mark, Bennett Sir. Thank you, Arlene. <laughs> on my left, our incomparable panel moderator, leader of men, women, and networks, and misleader of this panel, <laughs> Mr. John Charles Daly. Thank you. Thank you, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to What's My Line. But I'm sure what you'd like to do now is to meet the people who've been nice enough to come and visit us tonight and bring with them some very interesting occupations, which we'll try out on the panel and hope that uh, the results are beneficial for our guests. We'll also have a famous guest challenger a bit later on, but now, to get underway, it is time for the experts to meet our first challenger whose job they have to spot. So will you sign in, please, sir? Thane of Corda. No. Thane Robertson. Is that right? <laughs> I would say you have a lot of Scotch blood in you, sir. Is that right? Um, Got some Scotch blood? Where are you from, sir? Boise, Idaho. Boise, Idaho. Well, that's a long way to come from, and I uh, hate to make the travel some more. Uh, I've got four people over there from Manhattan, all of whom are currently very interested in knowing more about you. So first of all, I think you ought to meet them. Would you go over and see them, please? Is that a Boise tie? <laughs> Mr. Robertson, would you bring that New York tie over here and sit it down right next to me, please? And on the basis of this brief chance you've had to look at the panel and the panel to look at you. We give them one free guess as to what your line may be. We begin the free guesses with Miss Kilgallen. I think he's a novelist. A novelist, Mr. Allen. I think Thane is a thaler. <laughs> Miss Francis. Oh. Very serious looking gentleman. I think he's an ichthyologist. Mr. Sir. Whatever that is. I think Mr. Robinson is a composer of that immortal line, Boise will be Boise. <laughs> now, that almost brought the program to a sudden and, let us say, unexpected end, but nobody has it right. We'll let our viewers at home have a further look at Mr. Robinson. At the same time, we'll tell them what his line is. Uh, the rules are very simple. Every time you can get a no answer from the panel, it's going to cost them $5. We keep a record of all that up here. Ten of these no's, and you have won the game. Mr. Robinson is self-employed. With that, uh, let's begin the general question with Du Boise from Mount Kisco, Mr. Bennett Sir. Mr. Robinson, uh, you have a rather pale complexion. <laughs> Am I correct in assuming that most of your work is done indoors? Yes. <laughs> uh, isn't there a considerable amount of mining done around Boise? Would you be in any way connected with the mining industry? No. <coughs> no. <laughs> One down, nine to go, Miss Gilgallan. Well, is there any product involved in what you do? Yes. <laughs> Is it anything that uh, a New Yorker might come in contact with? Yes. Is it anything that might be found in the home? 
Would it be found outside of the <clears throat> home, too? Yes. Is it a useful product? Mm, would you care to define useful? Well, just can you do anything with it? <laughs> uh, uh, no. no, I don't think so. <laughs> Two down, eight to go, Mr. Allen. Who needs it, is that right? Mm -hmm. I think it's a very good description. Uh, is it uh, larger than a bread box? <laughs> Ever? Is it uh, larger than a bread box? Yes. I gather it's not much larger than a bread box. Am I correct in uh, taking... Would you care to define much larger than a bread box? No, I don't think I would. I mean, <laughs> I have to hurry along to other things. Uh, does it have any moving parts? Have any what? Moving parts? No. No. Uh, but three down and seven to go, Miss Francis. Does it contain anything? No. Four down and six to go, Mr. Sir. <laughs> Mr. Robertson, has it ever been or is it now alive? No. Five down and five to go, Miss Gilgallo. Well, is this product in any way ornamental or do you hope so? Yes. Uh, could this product have... Yes. Uh, is there something creative about what you do with regard to this product? Yes. Is it anything in art? Yes. Uh, it's larger than a bread box? Larger than a bread box. Um, well, is it solid? Yes. Is it anything in the field of sculpture? Yes. Are you a sculptor? Do you make statues? Yes. Well, don't be so reluctant to admit <laughs> it. <laughs> Very special type statues which have to be identified. Mountainside. Oh, well, are they, m well, you asked if they were much larger. Are they larger than a telephone booth ever? Just yes. a moment, we'll have to have a conference. <laughs> Good Lord, you don't mean it. Yes, they're better than that. <laughs> well, would they ever be found um, uh, out of doors in public places? Yes. Are they uh, statues of uh, historical or mythological figures? Yes. Well, what more do you want, John? <laughs> well, this is, this is extremely a statue. It would well, be a lot of fun you if you can't the, get it. Do you want the medium that he works in? Uh, well, if you found the medium he worked in, you'd probably get the type of, of uh, statue specifically. It's something that... Well, you'd get me one of them, you could get it. Uh, well, is it, uh, is it something that comes out of the ground? Do you do your sculpting directly upon the uh, final product rather than something that is later cast? Directly upon the final product? Yes. Oh, goodness. Uh, is, does this have any connection with cemeteries? <laughs> <laughs> I need to withdraw that question because there was a request for a conference. Oh, Mr. I'm sorry. Seth, you may have 30 seconds. Uh, it seems to me that there's some national monuments out there carved in the mountainside. <laughs> we wanted to well, that's really that. bigger than a phone booth. Well, this might be a small one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I'll pass to Steve anyway. But I, I can't get any further with this until I've thought about it. I think it. I may lateral to Arlene here. <laughs> uh, does it have something to do with the fact that it's in, in Boise, Idaho? In other words, is it... Well, uh, that's a kind of a clue, Steve. Actually, I'm only going to... Ask a couple more questions. I don't think it's fair to make you identify this. A particular. matter of local significance. Uh, well, there is an identification with the no. prehistoric well, is it animal. Marble? No. Is it's not, is it is it, uh, is it done out of uh, dirt or anything? No. no. Clay, I mean, out of no. the... No. no. It isn't done in the side of a mountain? No. No. Soap? But you get a lot of credit for getting the sculpture, but I think Tears? we have to give you, on the basis of sculpting, you have identified the <laughs> occupation. But it was a very special one. He makes wooden Indians. About the only man there is who oh earns his my. living making wooden in Indians. No. <laughs> and this is fascinating because um, people buy them now for decorative purposes around their homes, and they, you'll find articles about Mr. Robinson in national newspapers telling about the wooden Indians that he carves. All right, let's see what we can do with another challenge. Would you sign in, please, ma'am? Uh, 
Miss or Mrs. Fritz? Mrs. Mrs. Fritz, you've got to help me. What is this? Elfrida. Elfrida Fritz? Yes. How are you? It's very nice to see you with it. Uh, where are you from? From Eggleston, just uh, out of town, just Buffalo. Outside of Buffalo, New York. Well, it's nice to have you with us. And uh, Mrs. Fritz, would you go down and say hello to the panel, please? Well, Mr. Did you shake hands, Mrs. Fritz? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mrs. Fritz, will you go over and shake hands with me again now, please? <laughs> That's it. You come right here and sit down. I think perhaps you know that at this point we let the panel have one free guess as to what it is you might do, and we begin the free guesses with Miss Kilgallen. I think she operates a beauty emporium. A beauty emporium. Mr. Allen. She looks, uh, her shoulders look to me like the shoulders of a swimmer. Miss Francis. I think she raises dachshunds. <laughs> ah, Mr. Sir. I think she was Jack O'Brien's school teacher up in Buffalo. <laughs> no, I'm afraid nobody has it. We'll let our viewers have a further look at Mrs. Fritz, and at the same time, we'll tell them what her line is. <laughs> All right, panel. Uh, Mrs. Fritz, uh, you know how the game's played. Every time we flip one of these things here, <clears throat> 10 flips, $50, you've won the game. All right? Panel, Mrs. Fritz is self-employed. With that, let's begin the general questioning with uh, Steve Allen. Is there a product of any sort involved in your work, uh, Mrs. Fritz? Yes. There is. Is it a useful product? Yes. Uh, familiar question here, but sometimes it helps. Is it the sort of thing that a fellow like myself might ever have used or come into contact with? <laughs> Could this, uh, could this product ever be used during working hours? <laughs> uh, is it then a, a mechanical device of any kind, however simple yes. or complicated or whatever? It is. Might, uh, might you possibly find one or more of these in a very well-equipped office? <laughs> would, uh, would any uh, efficient secretary know how to operate one? on the wrong track, but, <laughs> but to make it definite, <laughs> uh, would it be safe to say that if you're, if you're using one of these uh, and you get to the end of the line, a bell rings? in an office, could it be found in a home? Yes. Can you sit on it? <laughs> Small conference. <laughs> I think he's changing her profession in the middle. <laughs> This uh, particular <clears throat> product is widely used, and it's possible under certain circumstances that one might be sat upon, yes. <laughs> to be sat upon? Yeah. No. <laughs> yes, it is not its main function to be sat upon, no. Uh, when you use this product, would you use it every day? Yes. Uh, is it a necessity? to have one of these. Sometimes. <laughs> I would say this, that when it is present, other devices not being present, it yeah. takes on the nature of a necessity. <laughs> <laughs> well, is it uh, 
about, is it something that might ever be used at night? Okay. Is yes, it something yes. you might rest upon? In the context of the question as you asked it, no. <laughs> Thank you. Two dollars ready to go, Mr. Sir. Mrs. Fretz, I, I get a vague thought wave that uh, this thing you're connected with is something that can be found on a woman's person from time to time in the way of either apparel or some kind of uh, uh, accessory. Is that correct? Yes. Is it, is it a kind of apparel, something that a woman wears? Mm. <clears throat> no, it is not itself apparel. Three down and seven to go, Miss Kilgallen. Is it something that is attached to apparel? Yes. Would it be possible that some of us sitting here might have one of these things and you wouldn't be able to see it? Yes. yes. Did you say it was a mechanical device? Yes. <laughs> would, I, would I have one <laughs> over on the side? Something that goes up and down? Fastener, otherwise known as a zipper? Yes, yes. that is the product. <laughs> Very good, Miss Darley. Now we have to have more particularly the association that Mrs. Fritz has to the slide fastener, otherwise known as the zipper. Well, she's self-employed, you said. Yes. Does she go around rescuing people who get caught in them? <laughs> well, in a way... She repairs them? Repairs <laughs> zippers is right. Very good, Miss Darley. Nice to have you in much more. And now, in just a moment, ladies and gentlemen, we'll introduce our mystery. Now, we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity, but also I want to clear up one fact. Mr. Robertson, who makes wooden Indians, will get the full prize because we didn't really guess it was wooden Indians. We got him to be a sculptor. But now, uh, to our mystery celebrity, and my friends in the panel would recognize our guest right away, so we have provided them with blindfolds. Are they in place, panel? Mm. Yes. Good. Will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? In the case of our mystery celebrity, we uh, dispense with all of the usual previous and early questioning, get right down to the issue. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, let's uh, just uh, get down to uh, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. Are you in the entertainment world? Yeah. Uh, are you a performer? Um, I didn't hear you. Are you a performer? Yeah. Are you an actor of any sort? Uh, yeah. Do you ever act in motion pictures? No, I've never done that. One time, nine to go, Mr. Allen. you never done that, you say? <laughs> uh, Is that what he said, John? Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I, mean, uh, I didn't done that. <laughs> What's he uh, want from you? Right. Uh, uh. But you, you are in, uh, did you establish he's in show business, Dorothy? He's an actor, he says. He's an actor. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was there. He dance? Was, he was there. You dance? Not so good. <laughs> Two dollars, they should go, Miss Francis. You have rather an unusual delivery. Would you be considered a comedian? Yeah. Uh, are you a low comic? I don't mean that in a bad way. <laughs> Sort of slap dash, helter skelter, uh, rough and tumbled kind of comic. No. <laughs> Three down and seven to go, Mr. Sir. Have you ever uh, used any accessories in the kind of act you've done? Would you define the accessory you have in mind, or oh, like accessories? Oh, uh, if I had an accessory, I ain't gonna use it. I ain't gonna just leave it there. <laughs> and he's not alone. Oh, God, six to go. I didn't, I didn't ask me to explain something. I, I don't need an explanation now, Barry. He said if he had success me, he'd leave it there. <laughs> That's four out of six to go, Miss Kilgallen. I wouldn't just leave it well, there. Well, then, uh, may we assume from the answer to your question, uh, the question by Miss Francis, that you are more or less of an intellectual comedian? Yeah. Uh, you... you <laughs> Uh, do you depend
depend on character and situation rather than just the one-liner. <laughs> yeah. Uh, are you ever in, in television? Yeah. Have you ever appeared in... I've seen in all this stuff there. You <laughs> <laughs> You're not ever supposed to tell her. Huh? You're not supposed to tell her. I'm telling her nothing. <laughs> John Mack. God, Darcy. Uh, have you ever appeared in New York in what might be considered a smart bistro? Yeah. Um, do you ever wear glasses? <laughs> yeah. Just a seat with. Do you, do you ever ride a motorcycle? Yeah. Are you Wally Cox? Wally Cox, you're right. <laughs> Wally Cox. Wally Cox, absolutely right. It's too bad you had to have your eyes covered, pal, because it's been it's wonderful just to bad, watch John. Wally <laughs> answer these questions. Just wonderful. Wally, may I thank you for coming over and sharing your wonderful <coughs> talents with us. So good to see you on our show. Good, good Say hello to the next time. I think we have just enough time to give you a little bit of a run with another challenger. Would you sign in, please, ma'am? Jean P. Schakowsky, is that right? <laughs> well, it's Mrs. Schakowsky, panel, and uh, I'm going to ask you, Mrs. Schakowsky, where you're from. Huntsburg, Ohio. Huntsburg, Ohio, and then ask you to just walk down in front of the panel, turn right around and walk back again, because time is very short. All right, Mrs. Schakowsky, right over here and sit down next to me, if you will. We have a little less than three minutes to see if we can find out what it is you do. And as you know, I think the panel gets one free guess after they've met you. We begin the free guesses with Miss Kilgallen. I think she runs a lunchroom. Mr. Allen. I think Miss Schakowsky works for the uh, Chicago White Sox. <laughs> Miss Patrick. I think she plays in an all-girl orchestra. Mr. Sir. I see the lady mayor of the town. No, I'm afraid uh, nobody has it right, so we'll let our viewers have a further look at Mrs. Schakowsky, and at the same time, we'll tell them what her line is. <laughs> if the panel has to work, Mrs. Schakowsky, I think you know the rules. Every time I flip a card, you have won one of ten possible points. Ten of these and fifty dollars, you've won the game. All right, Mrs. Schakowsky is salaried by our terms of reference, and we'll begin the general questioning with Arlene Francis. You have about two minutes to go. Do you work for a profit-making organization? No. One out of nine to go, <laughs> Mr. Seth. Well, you are then some kind of a government official, is that right? Yes. Would it be a local government? Yes. It has something to do with the town of Huntsburg? Yes. Has it got uh, justice in Huntsburg? I think so. <laughs> has it? Yes, it has something to do with that. Uh, well, are you usually found hanging around the courthouse? <laughs> Please. <Mr. laughs> have you an official position inside the courthouse, possibly? May we have a brief conference? I'm sorry, your time is up. <laughs> we'll hang no. be in, no. in the center. That's, it's two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. She doesn't hang around the courthouse? No, you... But Mrs. would her business ever take her into the courthouse? You might go in. Yes, yes, Do you ever have to deal with people who have broken the law? Yes. Yeah. Would you have any badge of office? In something that you wear on the lapel or something? Or she could carry it in her bag, being a lady. We'll have to have a conference. Yeah. No badge, per se. I'm sorry, that's three down and seven to go, Mr. Allen. Do you do legal work of one sort or another? Yes. Could an adverse decision by you make people very unhappy? It could. I see. Then you were in a position of some legal authority. Are you uh, something like a judge or a district attorney, something of that sort? Something of that sort, but that isn't the right one. It hardly ever is. <laughs> uh, Quick guess, Steve. Prosecuting attorney? Prosecuting Sorry. attorney, no. Miss yeah. Francis? Uh, but you do have a, you are a member of the bar. No. I, no. Justice and a peace? Justice and a peace is right, but it came too late. I don't have to the car. Mr. Picasso, you won the full prize because we ran out of time. 
just before they got it, and thanks for being our guest. Nice to And in just a moment, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to give you a preview look at one of our guests whose line our panel is going to be asked to try and identify on next week's... Next week at the same time, our panel of experts will be asked, what's my line by this man? Would you know what his occupation is? Uh, could you uh, spot his line? Well, for the answers to these and a good many other questions, and we hope a lot of fun, be sure to tune in again next Sunday evening at 10.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time when once again we invite you to play What's My Line. For other localities, check your local listings for the date and time of our weekly series. Until then, this is John Daly saying good night, Dorothy. Good night, Steve. Good night, boys, and good night, Arlene. Good night, boys, and good night, fellas. <laughs> Hope your show's a big hit, Arlene. Good, good night, John. You. Good night, ladies and gentlemen, and thanks for being with us on What's My Life? <laughs> this is an association with the CBS Television Network.